Hey, everybody. Thank you so much for coming out to this amazing event that Lawrence put together. It's a great honor for me to be here. My name is Matthew Boyle. I'm a language learning card game designer. I've been designing and putting out language learning card games since 2016. And I'm very excited to share with you something today about my journey through to, to create these games. I'm going to introduce some of the games, how they work, and I hope that we'll have the chance to play one of them together online at the conclusion of this short talk. So uh, briefly, a little, little background about me. Um, I love to play all kinds of games growing up, and I even spent a lot of time designing my own as a child. But I was never a particularly successful language learner when I was young. I saw the language learning classes as really something I just needed to survive. It wasn't until the year 2015, when I was about 28 years old and living abroad in China, that the thought hit me. Why don't I unite my childhood passion for gaming with language learning as a way to be more successful with learning Mandarin? I had become interested in Asia, particularly China, in high school, and I pursued, I took a lot of classes about China and university. My best friend studied abroad in China for a few weeks, and he told me that he thought I would love it. He told me that I really should come. So I had been preparing to be a teacher in my home state of Virginia, but he said, don't just stay in your hometown. Don't just stay in Virginia. You need to come out and see the world. Come teach in China. So I moved to China, started teaching in China. That's where I am right now. And I absolutely love it here. Um, and I decided to share my love of games with my friends and my students here to get more motivated to learn languages. So the idea stuck. And in 2016, I founded the Language Card Games brand to be my vehicle for creative exploration and production. It's a venture that I'm still fully invested in today. So how can games help you? What's the bottom line here? Well, we all know that games are fun and motivational. Let's put that reason aside and go deeper because I think games have a lot to teach us and they can help us in a great deal of ways, a great variety of ways. First of all, games get you into a flow state. You will not be realizing the amount of time you're into the learning as it passes by. It takes about 10 or 15 minutes to get into flow state. Once you're in it and there's no distractions and you're just having fun and you're learning, that's when you're going to start to see exponential returns on your investment in time of time. Games help you to form vivid memories. We all know that really um, to be a successful language learner, you have to develop a good memory. Memorization is, it just comes with the territory. Memory is something that you can practice. Memory is something you can develop. It's a muscle. And one thing that helps memories to form and form more deeply is if there, if there is um, interesting and funny and colorful conversation around what is being learned. That helps to attach some strong visuals and stories to the content. Games can really help with that. It brings out people's you know, more positive, fun-loving side and willingness to share culture and share stories. Games foster creative thinking and strategic thinking. You know, games, um, they often have, you know, People are trying to affect certain actions or get a certain edge or advantage over the other players. Just like think about maybe chess, for example. Okay, chess is a great example of that. Games help you get into lateral thinking and strategic thinking. You have to think about many different things that are going on at once. And you have to think, if I do this, what are they going to do? And then what's she going to do? And then what am I going to have to do? So that sort of strategic thinking is very good for the brain. And um, as some games, uh, the one I'm going to show you today actually has a little bit of a memory component in the sense of remembering where things are on the board. Some things will be hidden, some things will be revealed and then hidden again. That's also, um, uh, think of the game concentration. Some people call it concentration. Some people call it memory. There's that game where you flip over two cards and see if they match. So there can be a spatial awareness and a spatial memorization component to games, which I love as well. 
Games um, help us to develop our friendship and communities. As we know, in this day and age, people are, we, we are more connected than ever before in terms of social media, like Facebook, Twitter, email, texting, phone notifications. But strangely, we're more isolated and more alienated than, uh, than ever before. Um, our communities are really, um, they're fraying in a lot of ways and becoming more polarized. There's a lot of division online. And I think games help us get back to a more healthy form of our, of our, our friendships and our communities. It's an investment in our friendships and our communities. Sometimes I find that people that I talk to, they don't really want to come out to our gaming events because they don't want to invest the time. And I think the investment in time to come out for an hour a week or whatever to, to a game night with other people in your community, that's a vote for the health of your community. So don't just think, oh, I want to, I'd rather just relax and binge watch a TV show by myself, or I'd rather just play an app by myself. That's sort of that's that's taking the easy way out from all from all of your important friendships in your community. You need to you need to give that investment in time, and it's going to work wonders for your your community. And then um, just one final point: I think that games really mimic how we humans tend to learn from a young age, naturally and organically, in mixed age and mixed ability groups. I think games they can they are much closer to our nature than typical traditional academic learning or classroom learning they help to develop us more holistically so i think games tap into something primal and intrinsic within us it, it taps into the ways we we more naturally like to learn as children now what is a common objection? This is the most common objection or question that I get. People say, oh yeah, all sounds good, really sounds good, but can you really learn a language by playing a game though? You know, they're skeptical, they doubt this. And I say, well, the answer is, it depends. It really depends. Not only is there a wide variety of games, some could be very superficial, very quick. They might have, you know, they might be very limited in terms of their connection to the learning, all the way to the other side of the spectrum where you have really heavy duty resources and, and, it's, and things that are much more than a game. They are a form of edutainment. Education is a big part of the game. So it depends on how you use it and it depends on, you know, what is the game exactly? If you prepare to play before you play the, the game, the educational game, if you pay attention and ask good questions during the game, take some notes, share what you know, converse with others during the game. So in other words, you're an active member. And if you review what you have learned after the game, then playing a game is highly effective and it's as good as a tutoring lesson or a class, I find. But if you think that a game means that without applying any effort, I'm going to get my result and the game should just teach me everything and I can just be passive, well, then that will not be very effective. Any meaningful growth in your skills will require effort on your part, regardless of the resource you happen to be using. I don't care what textbook it is, what course, what app, what game, what tutor, what class, whatever you're using, whatever your method is, it's going to require effort. I think sometimes people, when they think game, they think, oh, I can take my hands off the wheel now. The game's going to teach me everything and I don't have to do anything. And then they feel disappointed when they don't really learn. If you want to use a game well for education, you still have to apply effort. It's not just for fun. It's not just to play and forget, you know, your responsibilities to the learning. So again, there's that spectrum. A game can be a very simple and perhaps even superficial enrichment tool 
all the way to the other side of the spectrum where it can be a heavy duty language learning resource. There are there are people out there who really only love to learn languages through games and they don't really learn in any traditional sense at all. A word of caution about games, because as I got more and more into this field, I naively thought, especially in the beginning, that everybody should be successful with this method. Everybody should love this method. And I thought it was the perfect antidote for individuals who may be more shy, more introverted. But what I learned was that games are not a panacea. They're not a cure-all. They're not a silver bullet. It's easy to think that games should make everyone happy and successful. But that's not always true. And I want to share this today because I know we probably have a lot of teachers and parents and mentors in the room. So games don't easily work for everybody all the time. Some people have trouble with being social in small groups, even though it's just a game. In other words, game, games might not be as attractive to shy and introverted types as you may think. They may still feel like a little bit under the gun or in the spotlight. They still may be sweating how they're going to interact with others. It really comes down to the individual and the exact context. Now, in our context, we help this a lot because we have very positive, very empathetic game masters and hosts for our online events. And we can prep individuals in advance who have reservations before they join. So we try to avoid any problems like this. Uh, but another issue is sometimes people have trouble with the games because, uh, you know, you have your highly competitive types and you have your, your types who just want to relax and have fun and not be so serious about the games. So there can be differences of styles over the rules and the nature of the game. If you have very competitive types in the game who like to know what the rules are and follow the rules exactly, sometimes they can be at odds with the people who just want to learn and have fun. And they're not really, you know, again, the, we're talking about educational games here. If some people really just want to focus on the learning and have fun and relax, they're not going to be as interested in the competition and the rules. So sometimes different types of players can be at odds over that. So it's important to know who's playing and why. Sometimes if necessary, you can create groups that have different focuses. Like you could have a more competitive group that knows all the rules to a T. And you could have a more relaxed, casual, casual group that just really wants to relax and chill in each other's presence and perhaps talk more around the game and less focuses on the game, more focuses around the bonding and the conversation. So again, my brand is Language Card Games. I wanna introduce for you really quickly the different games that I have available. First, heading into Language Land, the baby of a card game and a board game. This is my greatest, uh, my latest and greatest game. I put it out in this year. And this is the game that we're using in our online events. It's the game I want to attempt to play with you today and show you more of today. Language Guardians. This is my best game for casual gamers and beginning language learners, maybe beginning to intermediate language learners. It is the baby of Uno and language learning. If you know that game Uno or if you know the game Crazy Eights, it's kind of a blend of that in language learning. And uh, this game I'm providing uh, the printable version for free uh, through Lauren, through this event. You're gonna be able to access a printable version of Language Guardians for free as part of her um, giveaway package. Other Tongue is a game for hardcore gamers and linguistics lovers. This one has a very high level of difficulty. It's not for everybody. I've got two games that are related to physical flashcard use. I think making physical flashcards and also making a spaced repetition system for those flashcards is a really fun activity for young people and students. Uh, you can make a great lesson plan out of, out of doing that. And Fighting Flashcards and Lightner Cards are two products I made to be used in conjunction 
with physical flashcard review to gamify that process more and make it a little less rote, a little less routine. Chinese Champions was my very first game. I put it out after I had moved to China, lived in China for a few years. And it's really for Mandarin learners. People were saying, hey, this is pretty cool, but could you make it for French? Could you make it for Arabic? And that's when I decided to detach my games, my games from any one particular language and try to make games that could benefit everybody. So almost all of my games are designed to be used for any target language. Some of the games have translations into other languages. Some of the games are available in a variety of formats, such as printable, virtual, or real deck. Most of the games I make now, what I like to focus on is making games that have prompts and topics and frameworks, and the players study and talk about whatever language they want. So the game is independent of X, Y, or Z language. You can use it for any language you want. Now, this is my latest and greatest game. It's called Heading Into Language Land. I released it in this year. We've been playing it online since April. Let me show you some of the game cards. What I'm trying to do with this game is uh, there's over 100 different topics in the game. And um, my goal is to make language learning attractive to young people. I think a lot of young people, they instinctively love the fantasy genre. So I'm bringing in the fantasy genre and I'm creating a lot of different types of characters that I hope the players would think are cool or, or that the players could see themselves in. So there are young females, uh, for example, in this game, there are wiz young wizard females, warrior princess females. There's really cool monsters, something that the boys may like. There's magical, you know, sort of entrancing, inviting locations. And this last one I want to show you, maybe you can catch the resemblance of this character to me. This is a character that I had designed based off of my appearance. One thing that I also do for this game is card commissions. So I work with people to design their own characters or their own monsters, and we totally design the game card together. So you could choose the topics. You could decide what's the power of the character and what they look like. So card game commissions are also a, a possibility with this game. These are just some of the cards. There's about 50 cards in the game, over 100 topics in all. And we also have a study guide for the category, for the topics in this game, and also a story just for one's own entertainment and enjoyment. So there's a backstory for all the characters and places. Language learning philosophy is embedded into the story. These are some of the versions for it. There's the printable version, the virtual version, and the real deck version. The real deck version is super high quality. It's printed on a casino grade black core card stock with a linen finish. This is a close up look at the virtual game and I'm hoping we're gonna get a chance to play it today. But again, as you can see, it's kind of the baby of a card game and a board game. We use the cards to create a grid of spaces that becomes our board. We move our pawns where we want to go, where we want to explore. We flip over the card to see what's there. And then we roll a dice to speak about one of the topics on the card. And if we're successful, we're going to be able to take a certain action, such as ally with the friend, defeat the enemy, enter the location, or pick up the special item. If we're not successful, the card's going to remain there or flip back over. So play continues like this. Players move around, they accumulate points when they speak successfully, and the first player to a certain number of points wins. The only other thing that could exciting, you know, uh, change up that could possibly happen is if somebody lands on the same space as you. In that case, you're gonna to get to have a head-to-head -head battle. But basically, that's it, that's how we play. 
So how do our virtual gaming groups actually run? And this is something that you can do as well with the virtual version of this game. Every Saturday at 9 p.m. China time, we play Heading Into Language Land online. I state things in China time because that's where I live. China only has one time zone and China never goes forward or back on the time. So it makes it simpler for me. Everybody else is coming from different countries, different time zones. So you may need to use a time converter. So you can come out with us, you can give it a try. You can come out to join us and give it a try. Our events are free and open to learners of all levels. We've held over 30 events in this year with more than 30 active players on our roster from 10 different countries. We have regular groups for Spanish, Mandarin, and Japanese learners, and on occasion we have pop-up events for other languages or even open language events or mixed language events. If a new language like French or Turkish or Arabic happens to get more and more popular, then we can sort of fix it as a more regular group. But for now, we've only been able to achieve that with Spanish, Mandarin, and Japanese. We encourage sharing and looking up answers during the game. So the atmosphere is very collaborative. Don't think, oh, if I, if I can't think of something to say, I'm gonna be embarrassed and I'm gonna fail, like I have no way to make progress in this game. No, we share answers. We, we play open book, open notes, open translator. You can use the study guide again, as, as we play the game, you can use the study guide. And um, native speakers often join the events to teach and to guide. It's our goal to have one or two native speakers in the room every time. Sometimes we've even had more, like maybe three, which would be, you know, half native speakers, half non-native speakers. Each game can only have about five or six people. Six is, is actually the maximum at the table. Now I'm going to show you a video clip. It's just a 30 second clip that kind of shows you the movement. You're not gonna hear anything because I didn't want to uh, violate the privacy of the players by sharing their voices. But uh, you can assume that there's a lot of Spanish speaking going on. This is this uh, a Spanish round with Spanish learners. But let's see what the game looks like when it's in motion. So players flip over the card that shows where they want to go. Then they roll the dice and try to speak about a certain topic. If they're successful, they're going to be able to take a certain action and then refill the space with a fresh card and move to that space. If they're successful, they earn a point. If they're not successful in speaking, they lose a point. Usually in about, usually the game lasts about 50 minutes to one hour. And if you've got five or six players at the table, they each may get three or four or five turns. It really depends on how familiar with the players, the players are uh, with the game. And this game is highly adaptable in terms of how much time it needs to take to play. You can play shorter, shorter style rounds if you like. Uh, okay, before I conclude, I just want to share my contact info. My brand is Language Card Games, so the website is the same. The Gmail is the same. If you're particularly interested in the events, you can add a dot .events to the email address, and I'm also all over social. Thank you so much to Lauren for creating this event and for all of you for coming out to be a part of it. If you have any questions, I'd be happy to take them. And I also have the chance, I hope we have the chance to actually play a quick round of the game with a few members from the audience right now. Thank you so much.